Good morning, beautiful ladies and gentlemen, people of royalty. How are we doing today? What's up? What's up? Happy Tuesday to you all. I'm obviously doing very well. I'm at 49,000 encounters. I'm at 94 million Pokey, and obviously due to some really generous donations. If you haven't seen that, go check out the stream recap from yesterday. Uh, at least those who are watching this stream recap. That one's not out yet if you're watching the live stream. Sorry, I'll get it out as soon as possible. However, I do have some stuff to quickly pick up. We're making a lot of... We're going to be spending a lot of money today, okay? So keep in mind my starting amount because it will not stay that way. Uh, for better or for worse, I am definitely going to be spending a lot of Pokeyen to make a lot of Pokeyen, or at least that's the goal. Uh, I quickly bought this Ditto for like 5k, I think, and it was 25 plus in every stat except for defense, so we'll probably quickly flip that. Uh, I'll put that in my party for the time being. And then we've got some rare candies for underpriced. A lot of that stuff was just underpriced stuff, but now there's more stuff that I want to buy. First things first. Good thing someone just listed a bunch of them. I need shiny charms. 10 of them might do. I'm currently at 12. You know what? Let's just buy 20. That is a lot. We're going to spend 5 mil on shiny charms right there. Boom, bam. Like, already already minus 5 mil. So, keep track, dude. It is going to it is going to be crazy, guys. I'm spending a lot of Poke in today. We're going to go ahead and buy two 30-day donator statuses. Stock up on those. The goal would be eventually to maybe get 12 of these to have, like, a full year's worth stocked up. That would honestly be pretty incredible. It's a smart way to do it, I feel like. And then the next thing, this is spending money to make money. Anniversary chests being listed below 40K. I'm buying all of them up. So from 94 mil to 78 mil, that fast. That's how fast it can go. Now, some of that is obviously spending money to make money. Some of it's spending for investing in the future of shiny hunting. Some of it is to give away at the upcoming shiny rating this Thursday. So there's a lot of different reasons I bought a lot of that stuff. Now, one more thing that I think I want to buy. One sec. Well, now we're actually... This is actually pure spending money to make money, even in the shorter-ish term. I'm going to go ahead and look for a shiny flip. If I have this much capital, I should be putting some of it into direct flips. So let's find something. As I'm scrolling through, like, the recently listed shinies, this is pretty nuts to think about. I don't realize, like, how many shinies get listed this often. But, like, if we go back to, like, here, within the past two hours, there's, like, 70 shinies that have been listed. That's pretty ridiculous. Like, you don't... You really don't... I don't put into numbers, I guess, how many shinies come into the game and get listed and bred and sunk away. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, let's just look for IV. I'm not seeing enough recent stuff that is like flippable. So I'm gonna look for IVs. I'm gonna do 31 speed, 25 plus in every defense and just see what that shows me. We're seeing a lot of formulas. I could make some bigger flips. Like honestly, man, this has been up for 21 days is the issue, but this is an insane tentacle, but it's been listed for so long already. That's actually wild that this hasn't sold for 21 days. That seems insane to me. For a three times 31 like that, that seems pretty nuts. I guess this is 5.5, pretty comparable for three days. Tentacle prices get strange is all I can really say. Let's lower this to 20 plus in every stat. So now we see 2.2 mil for this Tenta. Pretty big difference, 2.8 to that. Let's check different egg groups specifically so we can kind of filter out tentacles because it becomes a little too complicated. Monster egg group, 31 speed, 20 plus. 21 days listed. I'm going to stay away from it. Flying egg group. Flying egg group and like I think bug and plant specifically can be really, really good. Um, I, I understand Gatorade. Here's an easy alpha ditto we can go encounter and catch really quick. Let's see how this goes. One of the best alphas to encounter. I got the Dragonite roll. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. That's pretty brutal, dude. Oh, jeez. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna spore first. I got Dragon Clawed to like 10% HP and then extreme speed it. Dude, this Alpha Ditto. Turning into a Dragonite is so hard. Oh man, I deserve it. That's so brutal. All right, one HP, asleep, timer ball. This was, a, I had to revive my bro. This was a tough catch, an extremely tough catch, but I'm obviously gonna get it first timer ball. True and real. That's the strategy. Easy peasy. Two up 31, special down HP. That's fine. That's fine. XP candy larges. We'll take it. Yeah, someone asked if I've ever bred two shinies 
for profit or bread shinies for a flip. I actually haven't. Um, it's There are some situations to where like it's really, really good to do so, but it's really difficult from what I've seen to find. It's really, really hard from what I found to like find those positions on the market where you can actually, I don't know, find two point worth breeding versus like just flipping both of them. Like usually when that happens, I'd rather just like flip two different Pokemon as opposed to breed them together to create one to make even more profit. There's very, very slim chances for you to actually make more. But I don't check, I don't check uh, like I guess female, female shinies very often for flips. So maybe if I did that, I would find that situation more often. That's another thing. To, but but you, you can make some really good, really, really insane profits sometimes breeding shinies for profit, but it's really, really hard to find those as the TLDR. All right, I'm not really seeing any shiny flips slash I'm kind of getting too distracted to really find one, honestly. So I'm just going to move on from that to, for today. You don't want to force a shiny flip if you can't find one. You don't want to be sitting on something for too long. I am going to go pick up. Are there expert lures over at this place? I do want to pick up some expert lures. While I have this, this amount of Poke Yen, I want to stock up on stuff that I know that I can use for an extremely long time. So yes, I'm gonna buy a disgusting amount here. We're gonna do eight, that's 69. That would be 1.3 million worth in export lures, which will put me out of, I was hoping for 1K, but I can't do math, but that's okay. 1,100 export lures, fellas. All right, I'm a little scatterbrained today, and since I am since I know that, I'm going to acknowledge that and essentially go do something that is kind of brain dead. I'm just going to go, um, we're going to go shiny hunt, fellas. I know I didn't expect to go right to it like this today. I expected to do a little more stuff. Maybe we'll do a, a Jimmy run here in a split sec, but let's go shiny hunt for a little bit. I just, it's good to acknowledge, you know what? I don't really have the focus today, so let's go do something that doesn't really require too much focus and change your gameplay based on that. How much play time does 49,000 encounters take? It really depends on the method. Um, it depends on the method of hunting. So I would say... Around 6,000 of these encounters were done via times five forwards. I think that these are the same. No, I don't think they are. I think around 6,000. Wait, are these the same encounters that were done during Shiny Wars? Now I don't remember. I actually don't remember. I'd say around 6,000 of these encounters, four to 6,000 were, um, I think they might be, which is kind of ridiculous. I think these are the same encounters that were done during Shiny Wars, which was back in January, which is crazy. So around 6,000 of which were time swipe hordes. So that's only six hours for that. That's pretty easy. But if you take the other, you know, six out minus six hours, so 43,000 encounters divided by around 280 encounters per hour. Um, so 153 hours for those single encounters plus six so i probably spent around 160 hours in game getting these encounters nothing crazy but definitely a slog Dude, i don't know why this is the case but in my opinion someone's bringing up like uh legendary hunting hunting the legendary to me feels worse than hunting for a single encounter hunting for a shiny i don't know why like even though like a legendary's rate is one is somewhere between one out of 1000 and one out of 8000 we don't know the exact rate um and a shiny is obviously one out of 30k a shiny should be way longer but I almost like that because then you can kind of just brain off and just kind of like run back and forth and forget about it. But with a legendary, you kind of have to pay attention. I don't know if there's a warning if you run away from it. You have to like make sure you catch it. You kind of you kind of just want to get it over with, right? Where like shiny hunting for a single encounter shunting, you're kind of enjoying the journey a bit more. Whereas legendary hunting kind of want to get it over with and kind of move on. Um, so it, it, it feels, it ends up feeling kind of bad, at least in my opinion, to hunt for a legendary. I don't really enjoy that process versus I do really enjoy single shunting, which is kind of funny because they're both mechanically the same exact thing uh hey pat what do you think of lilligant for early game of unova storyline uh let's check out lilligant i know lilligant's a quiver dance user which is pretty promising however it's a single typing so you don't get double stab but same with like blossom right 110 special attack 90 speed really really good storyline stats i'm seeing what level do you get it at you probably get it super early because you just you, you catch some shitty petalil and sunstone it Lilligan's probably extremely good. When does it learn Quiver Dance becomes the issue? Do you have to... Here, let's do Lilligan's. What level does it learn Quiver Dance is like really what it depends on how good it is. It learns it at the start? Okay, Quiver... Um, Lilligan is probably an extremely good Pokemon for Storyline. An extremely good Pokemon, probably. I could be wrong, but... This seems hyper-powerful. This seems very, 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 very good. If you go catch yourself, a, a, if you're stuck in the universe or haven't done your universe storyline, getting getting a Petalil early game around Pinwheel Forest will probably save you, or Lost Lorn Forest will probably save you a lot of hassle later on. It's probably very, 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 that's a good call. Very, very powerful Pokemon. 
Pat, do you still have Pokemon you did the storyline with? Dude, not many. Like, I don't have, like, I really wish I kept my original Blastoise. My my Kanto starter from, like, 2013. I wish I kept it. I didn't. I sold it, which is a good example of, like, why they're so hard to find on the, on the GTL, because everybody sold them or got rid of them, whatever, right? I do have a Dragonite. Like, I have my my swag teeny over in my PC that I, that it's like, it's like the Dratini that I went to Super Rod for in the Kanto Safari Zone, and I caught it you know on purpose for the storyline and to be like my hm friend and it's been my it's been my favorite hm friend since 2013 so that's always cool and thank you for the johnny charm guys you, you don't have to i really appreciate it you i encourage i always say i encourage you not to donate to me i'm fine i'm doing totally fine i really appreciate it i'm gonna go ahead and get a link going do you want to join we can go ahead and get, get shiny hunting um I'll pop a charm, why not? But I encourage you not to donate to me. Use your own money to develop your own account. You developing your own account is more beneficial and to the game and getting more players, getting more players to like a decent development stage in their account is way more important than me having 200K more Pokemon. Like, I, like it, it, I'd rather you guys develop your accounts and play the game and have fun and get more players playing Pokemon. I deleted all my 2012 characters. There's nothing I regret more. Yeah, dude, who would have thought like, you just never would have thought. It's the same reason why, like, Q Hat and Electric Storm. Like, you would have never thought that... You just, we just didn't think Pokemon was going to be around for this long. You know? It's just... It's crazy. And it makes sense that it has through all the market changes. Like, really, like, the breeding change in, like, 2014, 2015. Once they made breeding start consuming Pokemon, that's when it was, like... And it took us a couple years to even realize this. Everybody hated that change at first. But give us... Give it, give it two years of thought... And everybody was like, oh shit, this is actually genius for the economy, genius for the game. We're going to be here for a long time now. Holy shit, you know? It took, it took us a long time to realize. Did breeding used to not consume Pokemon? Yep. And that's what almost killed the game. Um, when you have... It's pretty ba simple slash basic. But like, what happens is, if, you, if breeding doesn't consume Pokemon, what happens is, it becomes the goal of everyone to get like a really good IV ditto. So like... Ditto's, like, the only valuable Pokemon, literally the only valuable Pokemon in the game became Ditto. And it was, like, Ditto's and Lucky Eggs were, like, the good things. And everything else was, like, I guess XP shares and certain things, that, like, TMs and, and move your learners at certain times. But, um, really it was, like, everybody wanted, like, if you could get, like, a 3 times 31 or a 4 times 31 Ditto, that was, like incredible that was like and like you would just breed every single pokemon with that ditto permanently and then permanently print good iv pokemon and then it's just what happens is if, if if breeding doesn't consume pokemon it's just supply and demand you end up with way too much supply of good iv pokemon none of them are ever taken out of the game or ever synced out of the game so it's just more and more and more supply and the demand stays the same or like goes up a slightly but the demand will never keep up with that amount of supply it's just way too when you when you have good IV Pokemon consumed, it controls the market. It's really simple, really really basic supply and demand. But it was really really difficult for them to find the system that that properly sunk good IV Pokemon out of the game. What is Electric Storm valued at approximately? All of those vanities, all of those like old the big three is what they're called. Um, it's Electric Storm, Q Hat, and Desu Lab Coat. All of those are worth around around rough huge rough estimate especially when we talk about this level of wealth around 15 bill not mil bill 15 billion pokey in um that's the general rough estimate from my understanding about what that's up now that might be going up or it's so so hard to to judge the value of that because so few trades are done those those items are so far and in between it's really, really tough to get an accurate. And they're not sold on the GTL. We don't have, like, price listings. You just hear rumors of, like, oh, a sale was done. You know, oh, like, oh, someone traded six, six times 31 char shiny Charizards, uh, 1,500 uh, RP vouchers, uh, 10 30-day donor statuses, 2 billion cash. It's, like, these insane levels of, like, tr of, you know, wealth that get traded for that kind of stuff. Um... So there's a website called Pokey MMO Hub where you can price check vanities and see like the history of those of prices. You cannot track the prices of things like Q Hat or, or even like even like flaming skull masts or other vanities that are worth once a vanity becomes worth over two bill, the maximum cash stack in Pokemon is like 2.2 bill. It's somewhat like RuneScape as a max cash stack because of like some integer coding thing. Um 
once you get over that, no, that stuff isn't being sold or traded on the GTL. So you really have to just, you have to just be involved in like the hyper high level, hyper rich community of Pokemon. And that's, that's really it. I mean, something to get to people, dude, people have been playing the game for a long time. Someone did a, who Thank was it? Someone in Team Mister started playing Pokemon Mo. People, it really funny. People who think that you can't make a ton of money or like, oh, like it's the game's bad for new players. Someone started playing Pokemon in like, I forget what year, 2021, 2022. They made 1 billion Pokemon just from flipping within one year. You can do it. It's a lot of hard work. It is a lot of hard work and effort and learning and practice and failures and successes. It is, it's a lot. It's not easy. It's not easy, uh, but it can be done. It, it's fair, you know, it, it is fair. Um, yeah, those vanities get ridiculous. Now there's even something more expensive and more rare than those three vanities. And that is a variation of the Desu lab coat. There is something called the colorable Desu lab coat, which is a Desu lab coat that is able to be dyed and changed color. And that was like, I don't know if that was a bug slash glitch or what happened with that, but something where like it wasn't supposed to be the case there's like very very there's even less of those that exist and i'm pretty sure colorable desu lab coats go, go for over 30 billion pokey yen 30 billion pokey yen i decided to make breeding my only income in pokemon as a challenge up to three mil cash and six mil on the gtl in the past three weeks you're killing it dude nice job like now is the perfect time to do that as well um once again like breeding is phenomenal it's no secret like breeding for profit is really really good and really really good right now now it requires a lot of skill and a lot of game knowledge and a lot of upfront capital and then on top of all that even if you have all the skills and all the knowledge for breeding it's really really mentally taxing i was saying earlier like comparing 10 hours of shiny hunting versus 10 hours of breeding for profit is just ridiculous because breeding for profit requires like 10 times the mental effort running back and forth in the grass is like easy to some extent but doing it for long periods of time is hard and like willpower and patience stuff like that comes into play and grinding is very much a skill in my opinion but it's not comparable to like breeding for profit for 10 hours is like in like usually people do it for like three hours max like me personally, if I start if I start breeding for profit, once I reach that like 45 minute mark, I usually make a mistake. Like I usually end up getting too tired or frazzled or just distracted and a mistake usually ends up happening. Um, it's just such a mentally taxing activity and it's very, very, you have to like watch every little detail to try to get peak profits. Uh, what shine are you hunting for? My priority list at this spot is number one, Sudowoodo, number two, Mr. Mime, number three, Shiny Breloom, number four, uh, Scyther, and the number five, Krikatoon. I would truly be happy with anything except for Ponyta. I've already had a single encounter, Shiny Rapidash, so don't want another one if possible. Do you recommend going to the Safari Zone and catching 31 IVs there? Because going to the Safari Zone can be really, really good Pokemon per hour from scratch, but once you Thank get you a catching Pokemon and some Pokeballs, or... Less than three. Thanks for the sub, dude. Or have like 100k Pokemon and can buy yourself a Breloom or a Smeardle with False Weapon Spore and Pokeballs. It's better to venture out of the Safari Zone and go make, like there's way better spots. Um, but from scratch, it's very, very, very good. Any good movies you've watched recently? I love this question. I've recently been rewatching Planet of the Apes with my fiance. I love that whole franchise. I really like that. I'm not a huge fan of old movies, but dude, the, ori the original like 1968 Planet of the Apes is one of those movies that I do have nostalgia for and that I do love so much. I haven't seen that full trilogy, but um, but I, I do love the original like the first Planet of the Apes movie. And then uh, we I watched the Mark Wahlberg one from like 2001. That movie was fine. It's like kind of funny. And then we're, we're watching the new ones. The new ones are so good, dude. They I, I'm re-watching them, but they're just... It, it, I feel like it's such an underrated series. I feel like Planet of the Apes, the like new trilogy, should like super be up there with like Lord of the Rings and like Harry Potter and Star Wars. I feel like it is such a goddamn good series and I feel like it's kind of been forgotten ever since the... I feel like give it, you know, five to ten more years. And we'll start really thinking of them hopefully similar to that they're really 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 good movies dude uh good morning pat i've recently got a team idea for doubles but i'm not sure if i want to commit to creating it because of the time slash pokemon i tried it on a pokemon showdown but there's not really any formats similar to pokemon it one of the hardest things about pokemon or pokemon Mo pvp sorry is that there's not really a way to test a team before you commit to it. it. It is genuinely, like, it's really hard. Like, if you don't know if the synergy is going to work, what I recommend doing is buy, buying, like, cheap versions of those comps. Like, just buy, like, don't worry about 31s, maybe for speed, but, like, just get, like, correct nature, 20 to 25 plus, and just keep that in mind. Um, and try to, like, test the team synergy with worse stats and a budget team, and then build the actual team, right? Um, 
it, it is really, really tough. There's not really an easy way. You have to kind of just, yeah, that's one of the hardest parts about Pokemon Mo PvP is the, you have to commit to build the team and spend the Pokemon in the time, which is tough. It's, it's, there's a big barrier to entry there. Yeah, for those who don't know, I've had this question a lot recently. What's the rarest shiny in Pokemon? Mo? It's by far Shaman, uh, because you can only get a shiny Shaman for one to two weeks out of the year during January, during the Lunar New Year event. And you have to do like a, like previously, in the previous year, it was like a 16 hour grind. And then you have a chance at Shaman. This year, it was like a 24 to 40 hour grind. And then you had a chance at getting a shiny Shaman. It was so crazy this year. Um, but then, um, it's also the only shiny Pokemon from my understanding. No one has a shiny Shaman. Apparently no one has Moltres either, which is pretty interesting. But I would say it's way more likely to happen because it rotates around every three months or so versus, yeah, shiny Shaman's, been possible for the past two years but we've never seen one and like people always say well oh like a shiny shaman could exist and someone could have just kept it private i mean that is technically true but that's it's the same thing as like saying like oh a unicorn could exist and we just haven't seen one yet like those two things are the same that is technically true but if someone owned a shiny shaman it's really really likely that they would have come out about it or someone would have seen it as a follower sprite or like someone else would have found out right um so for, for my understanding right now, there is no shiny shaman it is like the rarest shiny in pokemon by far from our current understanding people have even tried to fake people have tried to fake a shiny sh like done fake screenshots and stuff um Especially when I, when I talk about it. If I ever talk about or make a video about Shiny Shaman, and then like within the next one to two days, you see like a, a screenshot appear, it's usually someone, usually someone faking it. Uh, yeah, no, no one, that is not true. So there was a, there was a fake screenshot of a Chinese player who, who faked a Shiny Shaman. It was proven to be not real by the developers. Um, what happens is the logic behind it is like, so let's say, you know, YouTuber Petrowski talks about how rare Shiny Shaman is, and then within two to three days, a Shiny Shaman happens to appear. What are the odds that that person had Shiny Shaman and then just never showed a screenshot, never showed it to anybody until I talked about it? The odds, the logistics of that are ridiculous, right? Like, the odds are they're just trying to fake it. it just, that just happens. Here, we're talking about my Kranidos hunt, and I feel like every time I have to talk about it, I have to qualify, because I went 32,420 encounters for my Kranidos, and that doesn't seem that bad, um, but I was on dinner status and charm the entire time, so my rate should have actually been 1 out of 24,300, um, and still, not that, you know, only 8,000 encounters dry, but 8,000 encounters dry in a single, or in a time swipe horde hunt is 8 hours, not a big deal. But 8,000 encounters dry on an egg hunt is an extra 50 million Poke Yen spent. It's an extra, you know, 800 hours egg hunt. It's a big, big difference. Like, if if going 8,000 hours dry, let's say, let's do like the middle, let's say it adds 650 hours. Let's play it safely. Let's say that that adds 650 hours to your hunt going uh, 8,000 hours dry, right? In that amount of time, you could do 21 and a half times five horde shiny hunts you could do 21 and a half times five horde shiny hunts in the time that it took me just to go dry for 8,000 encounters for my cranidos egg hunts are brutal they're so difficult you you just never wish anybody could to go dry on them and i had it easy like even me going 32k for cranidos 32 like 420 or whatever I've known people to go 72k dry on eggs or even over 100k. Once you, I, I just, I lay down every night before bed and I, I pray to Arceus that nobody ever goes like dry on eggs. It is the saddest thing you can see for a shunter. Okay, speaking of 2013 Pokemon, I do actually want to check something. I saw something earlier that I was really interested in. Well, this is 2012s to be fair. 2012s, 2013. There is a 2013 shiny tentacle for four mil with particle effects, I'm gonna buy it. I, I know it's not, it's, that's a personal thing. It's, it's, it's kind of an investment, but that's, I really want it, man. 2013 Shinies are nothing compared to 2012s. I think 2013 Shinies are way more common than 2012s. It's still pretty rare, but like 2012 Shinies are just so rare. Um, but I, dude, for me personally, 2013 is the year I started playing this game. I have so much nostalgia for it. I have so much love for that year. I want to own this. This is important for me to own. The beautiful thing to own. It's caught in April, my birthday month. That doesn't really mean it. You know, <laughs> that's kind of a copium argument. But I, I want to own it now that I have the Pokey and it's something I can, I can, I can chill out for. I was playing for like 16 hours straight since I worked from home, and the game sent me two captchas to verify I was real or not. If you get a captcha in Pokemon, you're you're gaming. It's a that's a that's a badge of honor. 
Um, I got a bunch of captures whenever I would payday. Specifically, if you go like, if you go payday pickup farm at Dragon Spiral Tower, it's like the most, or like one of the most botted spots in the game. You'll get a lot of captures there. Um, yeah, but if you get a capture, man, just wear it as a badge of honor, kind of based. This is actually a tough question to answer. Pat, would you say that getting all regions done on five alt accounts is overkill? I'm considering it due to the potential profits for alpha catches. It seems ridiculous, but I don't think so. I think the only point where alt accounts become overkill is once you start reaching over 16, which is a ridiculous number, but there are, I know multiple people who have over 16 alt accounts with all five regions done, which is ridiculous. Um, but once you start reaching over 16, yeah, Xanarchy and Quacks are like overkill examples. Um, once you have over 16, like 16 is the number that I think of because for whatever reason, if you want to be a psychopath and you want to sit down and do gym reruns for 16 hours a day, you can do that with 16 alt accounts. Once you start pushing over 16, seems kind of overkill to me. Um, I think 16 alt accounts is the most you could ever need. The average player, maybe you have one or two alt accounts, maybe none. It's not a big deal, but in terms of asking for overkill, it gets kind of funny on the answer. It's a good question. What'd you get from Panera? This is a great time for the food take of the day. This is my Panera bread order. My Panera bread order is to do the, the pick two, the pick two for lunch thing. Pick two, and I get the barbecue chicken sandwich, like a half of that or whatever. And then I get the, uh, I get specifically the like white mac and cheese, not the, the broccoli cheddar mac and cheese is great, but I kind of prefer the like white mac and cheese. So white mac and cheese, half a small or whatever, and then a half barbecue sandwich, and then a bag of kettle cooked chips. Hey Pat, what do you think about doubles in Pokemo? It doesn't seem very popular based on PVP stats. It's not, yeah, it's definitely like not as popular as OU, but it's also not as dead from my understanding as like UU. I think UU is the least played tier. We can just check stats, but even then, that doesn't that doesn't mean you shouldn't play Yu Yu. If you like Yu Yu, should you should absolutely play Yu, and like that's, that's how you revive a tier, you know. So, let's see. It's currently March twenty sixth. There's been what is this thirty thousand doubles games played, uh, seven hundred and fifty nine thousand. OU is just a different breed. Everybody just defaults to OU. You know, whatever. It's just the tier. Seven hundred and almost sixty thousand OU games. Doubles is thirty k. UU is 22k, so even less, and then NU is 25k. So doubles is more popular than both UU and NU. That's quite impressive. Randoms is a lot of games, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how to see the total games though, because this only shows like per Pokemon. It shows like how many games that, that Pokemon was in. I don't know how to see the total amount of randoms games played. Uh, but randoms gets played a lot. I, I think doubles is a total, totally cool format. The main thing with doubles that's weird in Pokemon that a lot of people take issue with, especially coming from traditional Pokemon, is that in Pokemon doubles, it's bring six and then use six, if that makes sense. So doubles in Pokemon is 6v6 battles versus in VGC, aka the like the official, um, oh, scroll to the bottom for randoms. For the official uh, like Pokemon competitive format in traditional Pokemon, it's bring six, take four to the battle. Um, Oh yeah, so randoms has 213k matches played. So randoms is also super popular. So in terms of popularity, it's OU number one, randoms number two, and then doubles is the third mode, which is pretty good. Doubles and then NU and then UU. So I think doubles like, I think it's a cool format. I think it's really underrated. Doubles is inherently way more complicated than singles. If you want to play like a really, really high skill, skill format, doubles is definitely your pick, but it's also way harder to learn. And there's way, it's way more involved because of that. I would really, really like to learn doubles in Pokemon and try to get good, try to get good at it. I feel like it'd be like super, super interesting. I feel like if I were to jump into PvP, I'd probably do randoms or doubles. I'd love to see. Maybe there already was. Maybe the tier council for Pokemon already had this discussion. I would love. Maybe it's like not technologically possible. I don't know. I would love to see a poll of like whether the Pokemon community would prefer to change the doubles format to bring four or bring six, take four. So you, you bring all six Pokemon and you select four based on your opponent's team. Um, and you like see the, yeah. I, I'm really curious what the community would think about that and like how the high level PvP players, especially like the doubles players, I'd love to like reach out to them and like have their thoughts. Like, would you prefer the 4v4 or do you like the, the full 6v6? All right, I'm really sorry, guys. I'm not going to lie. I really wanted to push for 50,000 encounters today and I am stopping like right before but my throat hurts man all these long streams man they wear out my throat so i'm gonna take a take a breather 
take a break and say thank you guys so much for watching today. Didn't quite hit 50k, but we popped a bunch of charms. Donator status, we shunted a ton. And tomorrow, we'll hit 50k encounters. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Like the stream recap. Dislike if not, that's okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. I upload every single day. I stream on Twitch Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's links down below if you're interested in that. And if you want to go above and beyond and support the content, YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo allow me to be here, allow me to make videos, and you guys are amazing. Have a great day. I'll see you later, and good luck on your shinies. Good luck on everything. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, Arino. Yo, what's up? I just want to quickly say thank you so much for watching the entire video. That's very, very cool of you. And it's even cooler for all of these people to go above and beyond and support my content. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much again.